This is recording. Yeah, now it's recording. Um, welcome to introduction to Papiamento. Uh, the first thing I want to say uh, is that I'm not an expert in Papiamento at all. It's a language that I've just been introduced to in the past year. Um, and it's been sort of a pet project of mine to learn about it, about the history of it, and do what I can um, to learn the language while living in New York. Um, I first Did you just move your seat here? Into, um, looking into Sorry. the presence of the Dutch language in the Caribbean. Um, so living in New York, a lot of people tend to find somewhere warm to go spend a week or two in the, in the winter months. Um, and so I got it into my head that I wanted to see uh, Dutch spoken in the Caribbean. It seemed like a bit of a, an interesting thing to me. Usually when we think about um, language in the Caribbean, we think uh, French or varieties of French or Spanish or um, different kinds of English-based creoles. Um, so that's kind of how I started looking at the ABC islands of um, Aruba, Bonaire, and Curaçao. And then, to my pleasant surprise, I found that they had their very own creole language. So, Kiko Papiamento Ta. What is Papiamento? Um, it's an Iberian-based Creole with lexical influences from Portuguese, Spanish, Dutch, English, West African languages, Arawak languages, and um, bits and pieces of other, other things as well. Uh, here I took the conservative approach of saying an Iberian-based Creole because lots of people like to argue about whether it's Portuguese-based or Spanish-based. Um, I personally feel that it is a Portuguese uh, based Creole that has been heavily relexified into uh, with Spanish vocabulary. So a lot of um, Spanish words have replaced originally Portuguese based words at a later date. Um, it has a strong phonological and also some syntactic influences from West African languages. Uh, information on that is actually not very specific. Uh, but Kwa languages uh, spoken in West Africa seem to be like one of the, the more uh, important groups of languages uh, in terms of the words on um, And it's spoken natively by almost 300,000 people, and there are actually a lot of second language speakers of Papiamento as well. So it's spoken in the ABC Islands. Of Aruba, Curaçao, and Bonaire. Um, they're constituent countries of the Kingdom of the Netherlands, so they still have uh, very strong ties to, uh, to the Netherlands. Uh, a really interesting thing about these islands is that they, they are, in fact, polyglot societies. Uh, so this is something that I had read about before going to visit Curaçao. I kind of doubted it. I sort of you know, wasn't sure about the validity of it, but um, it, it does seem to be the case that pretty much most people can speak four languages fluently, and that would be Dutch, Papiamento, Spanish, and English. Um, English people get from the tourism industry, Dutch people get in school. Uh, nowadays, elementary school tends to be in Papiamento, although there still are Dutch schools. By the time you get into high school, your whole education is through the medium. Dutch, and if you want to go into university, Dutch is your only option. Um, and Spanish, because of the proximity of Venezuela, a lot of Venezuelan immigrants to the islands, and also media, radio that's available in Spanish, um, people are able to speak proper Spanish as well. So um, it's really quite interesting. In January, I spent two weeks in Curaçao, and I sort of I made it a point to speak all four languages every day, and I never found someone that could not reply to me in the language that I spoke to them in. So it's it's pretty impressive. Um, I found that the older the person, the better their Dutch tends to be. Uh, younger kids were maybe not so comfortable with, uh, with Dutch, but it seems that by the time they're in high school, they get immersed in it, and pretty much everyone can speak it. Um, and people are definitely used to code switching and changing their language depending on the situation. Uh, so one example would be I went to a documentary screening when I was there, and they did all the sort of like pleasantries and greetings and everything in the in the beginning in Papiamento, 
it's you know the more social language. But the filmmaker was actually Dutch, and was you know maybe one of very few uh, people there that, that did not speak Papimento. And so the discussion about the film and everything afterwards was completely in Dutch. It was, it was social political discussion of a high level, and no one seemed to have any problem with that. Um, and a lot of the movie was in English, with only subtitles in English. Um, so for polyglots, I think that these islands can, can be kind of an interesting place. Um, and what this means for the language is that uh, the language is made up of components from all different languages. And so well, as we start to dissect the language a bit and look at some examples, you'll definitely recognize um, you know, most of, of the components. Um, so first, I wanted to have you listen to a sample of Papiamento. It's a little bit of a clip. Um, you probably won't understand everything, but you should be able to pick out um, you know, at least a, a good chunk of words if you know Spanish or Portuguese. Um, so we'll see how it sounds. Prime Sassel, but you have to be figured out as Unesco Sudia, but Unesco Sudia, but Unesco Sudia, emphasis is the importance of each country is the emphasis of each country. Minister of Science, Minister of Science, Minister of Science, Minister of Science, Minister of Culture and Sport, Minister of Science, 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 8 de fevereiro, tempo 21 de fevereiro. De com 8 de fevereiro. 8 de fevereiro, está no momento, eu puxar uma direita, tem um parlamento holandês, eu tomo por aí, vou avisar. Como está se comunicar com o meu povo? Se me está usando o holandês, eu nem me meço a dominar, eu me meço para usar bom, para me poder defender, até para me poder explicar. Então, eu estou insistindo no papel, 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 papel. Senhor Vaz, se nós se entendemos bom, é em relação a esse período em que nós estamos em chamada na Unicur para nos dedicar a deixar na nossa venda. O que é o valor do MRC? Você está me dizendo ali? Sim, é extremamente importante. Eu estou olhando para trás, um programa fixo, que a minha vida não é só um ser, nem é de um erário, mas... Ok, então... Como é que você se sente? Do you recognize phrases, words? Yeah. Yeah, the way that you speak, some of it sounds like Spanish, some of it sounds like Portuguese. But the woman speaking to her, her accent just sounds much more Portuguese to me. Yeah, it's interesting. I notice um, that even within the island of Curacao, there are a lot of sort of different accents. Um, but yeah, I, I hear that as well. It reminded me of like Rio Platense Portuñol, but really fluent. I understand this, I think, but I don't know. Yeah, it's a very, very elegant fusion of, of Spanish and Portuguese. Elements. I would have said that she was speaking Papiamento when he was speak, trying to speak Spanish and he just doesn't do too well. <laughs> <laughs> there, are, there are a couple instances where he uses things that are definitely um, non-standard Spanish borrowings. And if you think about the concept of decreolization, so when a Creole language that has developed from a, a more dominant world language, when it's exposed to that uh, dominant world language, it tends to lose a bit of its some of its uh, unique characteristics in favor of just adapting words or phrasing or, or whatever from the dominant language. And that's definitely happening with Spanish and Papimento. Her, her Papimento sounded more like Papimento. Yeah. Um, so let's go back. Yeah, so let's go back. So what I wanted to do today was just uh, Um, so some grammar basics, uh, there are no verb inflections. Uh, tenses are just indicated by a particle preceding the verb. Personal pronouns have only one form for subject, direct, and indirect object. And some of those pronouns will also serve as uh, possessive pronouns as well. There is no grammatical gender. And the word order is basically subject, verb, object. So comparing to Romance languages where you have, you know, tons and tons of tense, um, tense forms, conjugations, 
uh, grammatical gender, endings, things like that, you can basically erase all of that. Like, so for someone that likes to you know, tack on a new language, learn a new language quickly, this is, this is a good one. Um, so I just wanted to show a little bit of nouns and articles. So since there is no grammatical gender, there, there is no difference between um, articles for masculine and feminine terms. The definition of the article is a, uh, presumably coming from ed, and the <coughs> definite is un. In the plural, you use this little uh, suffix nan, which comes from uh, West African languages. This is also a pattern that you can find in Haitian Creole. Um, and I haven't quite looked into it, but I, I think a lot of uh, Caribbean Creoles use this for the, the third person plural. And in the indefinite plural, if you can just use uh, noun as their suffix. Um, so if you take the example, a bookie, the book. So bookie comes from Dutch book. A bookie, and in the plural, a bookie noun, the books. Mm -hmm. So this is like a really short example of something I love about Papiamento is that you have a romance article, a Dutch word, and a West African suffix. And they <laughs> fit together very elegantly. Um, saku, a bag, saku na. Amigo, amigo. Friend, friends. So, a uh, sign from Willemstad and Kurzau, uh, just to get you know, a little more idea of the language. Turpos, la gente, familia. <coughs> you understand the meaning? So, familia, we have. Familia. Gente, familia. Gente, familia. Gente, familia. Yep, the whole, the whole family. And turpos. All things? Yes. Ah. All things. <gasps> <laughs> All things for the whole family. <laughs> so, I mean, everything is there. You can see it. It's just a little bit hidden. It's to pick it apart. Um, personal pronouns are also pretty pretty obvious. So, me, bo, from você, or vos, e, from el, nos, boso, from vosotros. Uh, and here we have this nun again. So I can't find any information around why only third person plural comes from uh, the West African source and all the others are romance, but it seems to uh, be not only about the American But if we look at a couple sentences, a, so, or he or she, a tanakoso. So ta is from esta, esta. So eta na corso. Mi ta contento. Mi ta contento. Nan ta amigo nan. Mi ten un carta pa vo. I have a letter for you. Mi ten un carta pa vo. Fiamium Flori. Uh -oh. yeah. Flori is a gilder. It's a gilder. Yeah. Dutch gilder. Or Antillian gilder, is it? What's that? Is it Antillian gilder they use, right? Yes. So Fiami is lending. 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 Fiamium Flori. Some more. Um, Lanta Bocara, Viva Lo Cultura. So, Lanta. Any ideas? Raise, lift. Yep. Uh, Levanta. Lift up your face. In your face. <coughs> Viva Lo Cultura. Live your language. Live your culture. Live your culture. Live your culture. Live your face. And live your culture. So possessive pronouns are the same as... Uh, some of them are. Oh, some of them are, okay. Yeah. Some of them are. It's no mistake I used bowl here. Uh-huh. <laughs> Something else. 
Okay, so present tense. Uh, the present tense is usually formed by using the particle ta, uh, derived from esta, esta, uh, in front of the basic uh, verb. So, uh, mi ta traja, traja is work, trabaja. So, mi ta traja, I work, or I am working. It can have a progressive meaning. Botar papia, papiamento. He's speaking. He's speaking. Yes. Do you speak papiamento or are you speaking papiamento? So incidentally, papiamento, the name of the language, comes from the Portuguese word papiar, uh, which is like to chat. Um, so papia is the, the general word in papiamento for speaking. Bota papia, papiamento. Nos tabaicas. What do you think bai is? We go home. Bai? Yes. Bai is from bai, go. So we are going home. Nan tawak television. Yes. And what do you think wak is from? Wak. Ah, wak. Wak. So wak. Wak in the sense of like guard. And then for you know your basic conversational sentences, we're using this this present uh, form. So bon dia, conta vai. Conta vai. So how is it going? So ta vai going. And mi ta hope bon. Very good. <laughs> it's funny the way you say that Creole speaking pigeons. It's like <laughs> okay, is, is that on purpose? All right, all right. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> I like it. Um, so another thing I'm noticing here, Hopi uh, is very, and I had a really hard time finding out where this came from. Hmm. I, couldn't, I couldn't really figure it out. Uh, so I ended up asking on a group on Facebook. And it's from hope or hope in Dutch. You have to like a pile of heap. So I'm heaps good. Haitian has the same thing. What's that? Ah, okay. A great deal. A great deal, yep. Um, so here's some classified ads from a newspaper in Kurosak. Um, and it's using this ta construction. So tahu tas. Food is to rent. Yeah, in Dutch. Homes for rent. So in Papiamento, there's no strict passive tense. So sometimes they use present tense uh, without an actual explicit subject, so an impersonal um, present tense to express like a, a passive meaning. So tahurkas, homes for sale. Tabuskakas. Tahurauto. Oh. And the last one was Baja Baja Peso. Yeah. Um for so su carnaval ta crece u talento nan novo. So for so su carnaval. So even though it's talento nang, we don't have a plural form for noble. Nothing is, is marked. Like, Young. What's that? Mr. Joven. 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 Where are y'all? Where are you? So, <laughs> yeah.
thin you have. So both are thin for be placa. But do you have a lot of what's placa? Both are thin for be placa. Four is from Pude, Poder, Yehutu. So mi por hasie pavo. I can do it for you. Mi por hasie pavo. Sa, saber, saber. So to know how, to know. Eno sa papia papimento. He doesn't know how to speak papimento. Conoce, to to know, conoce. Mi no conoce nada. I don't know them. Que is from Kire or Kire. So go que hasi. So to what? What to do it? What to you? Kiko is what? So que cosa? For example, Kiko go que hasi. What do you want to do? And mester from menester. Necessary. Mi mester lesa e coran. Yeah, I have to read the newspaper. So e coran is from the com, the the newspaper in Dutch. Um, and interestingly enough, because the educational system until recently was entirely in Dutch, so you find a lot of words having to do with like reading, writing, things like that are all Dutch. Dutch I have a question. What if? On for general verbs, you don't use ta. What's the meaning of that? Is it does it have? Is it does it exist? It is. It's a way to express the present subjective. Okay. Yeah, and actually, that's gonna show up somewhere. I think. It's kind of weird. So the simple present is a more complex construction than yes. the present subjective. <laughs> okay. Yes. Yeah, it's interesting. It's the same um, in the cool cool. Arabic as well. What's that? It's the same in a lot of cool cool. Oh, wow. Um, so here's some examples with K to to want. Boke hen, boke pone hen de escucha ora bo papia. So do you want to make people escucha? Escucha. Listen. Ora, so when. So ora bo papia when you speak. Um, do you want to make people listen when you speak? Boke quita e miedo y papia. Delante un grupo. No quiere que vea. Porque seña comunicar en el lugar de papiá. So you want to seña from enseñar. So it can mean to teach or to learn. Either way. Porque seña comunicar. You want to learn to communicate en el lugar de papiá. Instead of speaking. Instead of yeah, just speaking. Scribi, by force, so be public. Uh, here's with mester, so it's it's necessary to, have to. Uh, mester, investiga unda mastin edificionan quas est. You have to investigate where else in edificionan quas est. There are buildings with seven mastins. So that's present tense. You've done it already. You know it. <laughs> Easy. <laughs> um, so all the other tenses work very similarly. So past tense we, is just a matter of this particle a, ah, um, which comes from a bit, a bit. So instead of mi ta bai kas, I'm going home. Mi a bai kas, awe nochi, last night. So I went home last night. So how would you say you went home last night? Both of us, both of us, both, both, yeah, both of us, or both so if it's both, yeah. Um, bo alesa e bukina. Books, bukina. Did you read the books? Um, how would you say I read? Alessa, they read the books. Yes. 
there is an exam. Could depend on the situation. Um, so uh, yeah, it's been it's been a lot of uh, fun for me to explore this language, and um, uh, yeah, I think for for polyglots in particular, and certainly the society on the ABC Islands uh, is is of interest to polyglots. Um, as far as resources go for learning language, um, these three books written by the same guy are just an English, uh, Dutch, and a Spanish um, version of, uh, of a pretty good book for learning language. These two are pretty much similar. Uh, the Spanish one, for some reason, is more just like a phrase book, side by side Spanish to popular language. Lost um, the tree. What's that? <laughs> lost the tree. And lost the tree. <laughs> um, <laughs> but uh, I think they're they're actually very good. They they really get you to um, uh, translate sentences, to get thinking in the language, um, and it teaches you systematically enough that you learn a lot uh, very quickly. Uh, this book, Basis Cursus Papianense, is uh, very expensive, and it's more of like a traditional textbook. Uh, I'm not as big a fan of it, except that it, it does have a lot of good cultural information in it, and it comes with audio as well, which is, which is useful. Um, so those are sort of the, the traditional learning resources that, that I found. Um, and there's a lot of media as well uh, that you can find online in, in popular media. So there's um, Telecuração, which you can stream live, I think, a couple different channels. Uh, online, there's always like talk shows Bondia um, is a, a newspaper from Aruba. There's a new TV series that everyone's really excited about, Jason Tiki Love. Um, a little bit of, of love. Yes, now. <laughs> um, and then one of my favorite things actually is the Facebook um, site Humans of Willemstad, which is based off of the website Humans of New York. And uh, they basically go and take a picture of someone they find on the street, and the person tells about their life story or you know, a little, some interesting tidbit. Um, and I really like it because you see like very colloquial language, you see people switch from Dutch to Papi um, you see you know, what people reply in which language, so it's, it's, uh, it's pretty interesting. So, Masha Danki, um, the one thing I didn't really get to uh, in this presentation, for lack of time, is more about like uh, what actually is a Creole language and how do they form, where do they come from. Um, the reason I didn't get into that is because uh, you could talk for hours about that, um, but on my blog I've written uh, a lot about what I've learned in the past year about Creole languages, uh, specifically relating to Papimento and then Macanese Patois, another Portuguese based Creole. Um, so if you're interested in, in that, um, then yeah, I welcome you to What's the name of your blog? It's Lectania Linguistica. Oh, it's automatic. If you can scroll down a little bit the PDF, is it possible? It doesn't want to scroll. It doesn't want to scroll? No. It's <coughs> um, Collectania.
Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen that usage, but uh -huh. it's possible that at Well this was seventy <coughs> plus years ago. Yeah, it's been a very common word uh, used to refer to, to Creoles or, or dialects in yeah, lots of different situations around the world. So, so yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. I don't think anyone is really using that nowadays. I haven't encountered it. To what extent is uh fucking to use to at the higher levels of uh, intellectual activities like uh, science, teaching universities, uh, folks in sociology, uh, or is it just a language thing for the industry, the market language? Uh, language it's really not an academic language as uh, as it is right now. Um, they they have started, at least in, in Curacao, I'm not really sure what you have um, but they've started using it in uh, elementary schools. And I heard a lot of complaints when I was there asking people about this, a lot of complaints from parents uh, saying that it was um, hurting the quality of the education that their children were getting because there was not enough print material to keep them interested in reading and, and that sort of thing. Education system is in Dutch, or is it in English? It, it traditionally has been in Dutch. Now they're doing Papimento in the primary school, and high school and up is all Dutch. Yeah. So they're, they're not going to change that? Um, they're not switching over? As it, as it seems now, there, there isn't like the resources or the, the momentum to, to do that. And actually, a lot of people are wanting to switch back to elementary school in Dutch so that children are immersed in it, and by the time they get to high school, they're not just thrown into, you know, suddenly high school level learning in this foreign language to them. So uh, there's a lot of debate about that uh, now. And, and to add to that, I will also say that um, I went to probably one of, the, one of the bigger, nicer bookstores on the island, and I was really hard pressed to find a book in popular. Like they had books for learning it, and you could maybe find like a, a local guide, you know, some local information, things like that. But I couldn't find a single novel, um, and yeah, there was hardly anything about the There's tons of books in Dutch, English, Spanish, but not about the So, yes. Yeah. Um, seeing as we're in Montreal and it's like a polyglot, the ABC Islands are like a polyglot haven or whatever. Is there any kind of like, um, politicized nature of kind of like which language you use? Like do people get like upset and be like, no, like we speak Papiamento here and we speak Dutch here? Or like is there a crossover and it's just kind of like whatever you, it's, it's like here we go Starbucks, bonjour high, and then whatever you apply it. Like how does that kind of like work on like a day-to-day -day basis? Like which of the four you decide to like interact with somebody with? Um, I'm not sure I would really be able to answer well, first of all, I was only there for two weeks, so that yeah. doesn't give like, a breadth of, of um, experience. But also, as um, as a foreigner, you know, people are happy yeah. that I spoke anything. You know, so whether it was you know, Papiamento or Dutch or Spanish, it, you know, it, it, I wouldn't know. Um, I, I wonder about. Um, uh, documentary screening that I went to and how you know it, it was it was Papi Mento speaking in the beginning when they were you know introducing people and greeting and everything but then the discussion was definitely only in Dutch and I, I wonder how much of that was because of the, the presence of one or two Dutch speakers or if that's just the uh, you know the language of that kind of situation like people have gone through high school and that sort of thing in Dutch so you discuss the language. Uh, going back to the topic of written papimento, so uh, you said it was difficult to find books in it, but the examples you've shown us, uh, I mean, you, the press, so there seems to be a, a living press in papimento, right? So, uh, and it, it all, and uh, I read, you know, the language is, the language is now one of the standardized Creole, so it has a standard written form too, I think, if I'm not mistaken. Um, three, even. <laughs> So uh, how's that going? Is it is it sort of an organic? Uh, is it something people just uh, uh, agreed on? Is it through usage or is it uh, directed uh, standardization? How how does it work? Um, in, there's definitely um, 
set the standardization uh, for you know for each island, and like the Aruba one tends to be a little more etymological, so they, they spell things closer to the, the Spanish and, um, uh, Portuguese words. They use lots of like C's and things like that. Whereas in Curacao, it's purely phonetic, like a K is always a K, and um, uh, you know people say papiamento, so they spell it with a U. In Aruba, they spell it. But do they say papiamento? They say papiamento. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But they still spell it with no. Um, I would say from my experience that people don't pay much attention to the standard. Um, what the written papiamento that I've seen like online and that sort of thing, like it's, it's flexible, you know, people people don't really necessarily stick to the standard or even like the standard. Um, but yeah, you're right, there's, there's lots of newspapers around in Papimentu. Um, and yeah, not so much literature, that kind of thing, but uh, for sure the press is, is largely in Papimentu there. Uh, something else I was going to say? No, I don't have a question. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Thank you. because there's a shortage of materials and, and so there's actually a lot of debate going on about mm. like is it more important to stick to the standard that you've already set or is it worth changing an ABCY standard yeah. cool resources and, and that sort of thing. Because that could be the reason why it's not working like the primary education is not successful like it was in that community. I'm sure that's part of it, yes. <laughs> Would you say that again please? Well I just said that that's maybe one of the reasons why it hasn't been successful, the, the change over from Dutch to Papiamento for primary education. You might take one more question. Okay. Do you see an evolution culturally in terms of literature and music and uh, with uh, the Papiamento language? Do you see something uh, taking more ground right now? Um, I mean, I've only been exposed to Papiamento since, you know, it's been less than a year, so it's all new to me, um, but generally uh, it's said that Papiamento is like one of the few uh, Creole languages in the Caribbean that's growing, that's gaining status, that's becoming more and more. 